Today we're going to discuss table saw kickback and what causes it to happen. This is the first video of many videos that I'm going to make over the next few weeks basically geared towards beginners using table saws, understanding a table saw, and making safe cuts with a table saw. Let's dig into this. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. There's two types of table saw kickback and maybe one of them shouldn't even really be called kickback, but it is. And we're going to go over both of those and exactly how they happen. A little bit of preventative stuff, but I don't want to get too much in this video. Um, there will be other videos up and coming that are going to show you safe cuts, how to make safe cuts. Um, and just cover a lot of the basics of using a table saw. I have my blade raised all the way up. When the table saw is in operation, the blade is spinning toward you. In other words, the front side of the blade is doing all the cutting. The back side of the blade is just riding through the kerf. It is not doing any cutting. However, this is where the problem is because this side of the blade is spinning in an upward direction. So the front of the blade is kind of holding your material, it's pushing it towards the table. But the back side of the blade is attempting to lift it up, especially if there's any binding that occurs. And that's where you get in trouble. This is the riving knife. And the riving knife is designed to prevent the kerf of the wood from squeezing back together and grabbing a hold of the back of the blade. In other words, it prevents the back of the blade from lifting the workpiece up off of the table saw. And just so we understand a little better, the kerf is the groove that the saw blade is cutting into the wood. So as that saw blade is cutting the kerf in the wood, wood has tension and sometimes the wood will try to squeeze back together as it's being cut. And what the riving knife does is prevents it from squeezing far enough to grab the back of the blade. One of the causes of table saw kickback is the fence is not parallel to the blade. If the fence is not parallel to the blade, this can cause issues. It is not so bad if the gap between the back of the blade and the fence is wider than the gap at the front of the blade and the fence. You're not going to get a very good cut but it's not going to be trying to throw the board back at you. If the back of the fence is closer to the blade than the front of the fence, you could find yourself in trouble. And because what happens is as the board is coming through, the fence is crooked. We're going to just loosen it up here and, and, and kind of do this. So the blade has an eighth inch gap here, but is touching here. And that is not good because as the board comes through, it's going to start to bind because it's just too wide and it's not wanting to fit through. And as it starts to bind, it's putting pressure on the riving knife. And as you can see, the riving knife can move. You do have another piece of material on the other side of it, but it's not enough structure in most cases to prevent this riving knife from tweaking over some. And if it tweaks over, the back of the blade can grab this board and if it does it attempts to try and lift it up this is where the real problems start because it will lift the board up and if this happens lightning fast it'll lift the board up and it'll actually come up on top of the blade like this and then it just ejects it right out of the saw the injuries that occur from this are because you have your fingers back here on the board maybe you have a push stick or a push block ready to go to push it through or you're already pushing it through with it which would be best case scenario but as it grabs the board and it takes it out because you're putting pressure on this and especially worse with your fingers you're putting pressure on this and as the blade lifts it up and grabs it and throws it out of the saw, the pressure on your fingers, just the pressure that you're using to push it through, and when the board is all of a sudden gone, the push from your fingers can wind your finger right up in the blade. 
So that is one form of kickback. And that is not the only way that it happens, but that is one way that it happens is because you have a fence and a blade that are not parallel to each other. Another way that this can happen is that you're improperly using your push stick. When you're using your push stick, you don't want to have it over here really close to the fence where it's trying to teeter the board while you push it through. You need to have it centered or a little bit off center towards the blade so that it pushes it through as straightly as possible. This way you're not trying to force the blade crooked as you're pushing it through the cut because the resistance of the movement is on the blade itself. So when you're only removing, you know, a little bit of material like this, the board is going to want to twist naturally if you're not pushing it in the right place. And that is cause number two. Improper feed through the table saw with a push stick and you're pushing it in the wrong place. So you want to make certain that you push it in the center or a little bit off center closer to the blade. Reason number three your table saw can kick back cutting through knots. If you're going to rip a board through the knot, meaning you're going to make your cut right straight through a knot, you're going to want to inspect that knot. And I picked this board for just this reason. This is not a knot that I would rip through. What can happen is, as the blade's cutting through this knot, if the knot becomes loose, in other words, it detaches from the wood around it, it's just kind of dancing in there. It can be stuck and have nowhere to go. And what can happen is when you get to the back of the blade, this thing could just grab a hold of the back of the blade and eject the board. So if you have a questionable knot in your workpiece, select a different workpiece, trim it off, especially if you're doing glue ups, get rid of that knot. That is very dangerous to try and cut through a knot that is degraded as that. On both sides it's the same thing I can see light right through it just not a good choice to try and rip through that knot now obviously when we're cutting our wood we do not have our blade this high this is just for demonstration purposes so that we can get a good view of the riving knife and most people you will see use their table saw like this they will not put every guard on here that you can. We have other safety guards that we can put on here. And what we want to do is we want to mitigate table saw injuries. Sometimes the guards and the anti-kickback pawls that go, that attach to on, in this case, on my riving knife on this particular saw, they get in your way. And that's very unfortunate. If you're trying to do thin strips of wood you can only bring your fence over so far before the edge of the fence is touching on the guard itself. So it limits you to how thick of a piece of wood that you can cut. So the easiest thing you can do is take the guard off. Also, if you're using sleds of any sort, the guard is just in your way and you can't use the sled with the guard. So the guard comes off. If you're running your table saw without the guard on it to protect yourself, never ever put your fingers anywhere near this blade until it has stopped rotating. And just so you know, my saw is not plugged in. So this is kind of where the next form of kickback comes in. And it's not really a kickback, it's an ejection. To me, a kickback is when the back of the blade grabs the board and lifts it in such a manner that it throws it out of the saw. This is where people get their fingers cut. This is where the people get their fingers cut off or they cut their hand or they get cut very badly. And like I say, just from the pressure that you have pushing the wood through. I have a table saw series. It's in my playlist. Please go look at it. There is a lot of good information in there. Some of them are a little longer form videos. I'm going to keep these shorter and just talk about what causes table saw kickback, um, how to make a proper cut, so on and so forth. We're going to break it down like that. 
So an ejection is not going to ride up on the blade and fly out of the saw. What's going to happen with an ejection is it's just going to shoot it out of the saw. Let's talk about that. Now I also want to add that kickback can occur when you are cutting any size piece of wood. You could be cutting an entire sheet of plywood and experience a kickback. The saw does not have enough power to throw that at you and hurt you and typically you'll be far enough away that it's your fingers aren't going to be in any danger nothing's going to be in any danger it's going to kind of hop it up out of your saw and maybe jam up your blade um, but basically everything will just come to a stop it's these smaller pieces of wood that are the the most difficult to cut safely so that's kind of also why I selected this smaller piece of wood so like I was just saying we removed this guard so that we can cut these thin strips of wood and these thin strips of wood are the ones that can are most likely to eject from the saw so they won't ride up on the blade they will stay laying flat right down in here between the fence and the blade and just shoot out towards me at a rapid rate of speed. The problem with that is, and they may become slightly elevated as they come out. And you may have seen pictures um, or YouTube videos where these ejections have flown out and hit people and the wood actually punctures them. It comes out of here like a spear. And the reason that it does that is because either one they have they were using their push stick because it's the only thing really narrow enough to fit through you can use a push block but you have to have your riving knife set down like you're not making a through cut so that your push block can slide over the top of it as you get there and the blade will be cutting a little groove in your push block as you go over it but if you're using the push stick sometimes people get lazy and once the blade is done cutting it, they let go of it with the push stick. But it's not clear the back of the blade. And if it's not clear the back of the blade, and that piece starts dancing in here a little bit, and the next thing you know, the back of the blade kind of grabs it, and it just shoots it, kind of like a bullet, right straight out. And this stuff doesn't happen like, oh boy, you don't even see it coming. It happens so fast that it, it's just, it's unbelievable. I've experienced it. I've almost lost the end of my finger with this very table saw right here from a kickback. And believe me, it happened so fast, I had no idea what just happened. When I turned the saw off and looked at my finger, I looked at, at, at the saw and I just kind of walked out. I knew I needed to go to the emergency room. They were able to sew the end of my finger back on. And the reason for that was is just me being complacent. I did not take every safety measure that I needed to take. I was resawing a two by four and I hit a knot in that two by four and it ejected it. So these are some of the reasons that a table saw can kick back. Now here's the thing. You always hear people saying that if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. But how does a beginner know what feels right and what doesn't? They preach wear ear protection. When I'm using a table saw, I do not like to use ear protection because I like to hear what the saw is doing. I like to hear the tone of the machine. Then I know if I hear that tone or that pitch changing that something is going on and that to me is not right so either my blade has become dull my blade is plugged up with sap because i do muck around with a lot of pine and that will sap up your teeth and then the blade needs to be cleaned periodically it could also mean that there is a harder spot in the wood um, it, it could mean a lot of things I like to hear that pitch, that tone, stay consistent.
while I'm cutting this piece of wood. If I hear the saw bogging down any at all, and I know I'm not pushing the board any faster, then I have to assume that I'm hitting a hard spot. But you also have to take a good look and make sure that the board is not squeezing back together. In other words, your kerf stays the same size as the board is pushing through. If it's not, and you hear that pitch change, and you look at this back of the kerf as you're cutting it, and you see that kerf is closing up, stop. You gotta stop. Don't try to force the board through. It is actually trying to squeeze the back of the blade, and that is the extra resistance or that little bit of bog down that I'm hearing. So I, I know you should. I don't like to. I like to hear this saw. I like to hear everything it's doing because to me, that is my advance notice that's not happy. This saw is not happy. It's not happy about the piece of wood that I'm pushing through it and I stop. I'll slide the board right back out, take a look at it, see what's going on. Maybe it's just not a good choice of, that piece of wood's not a good choice for what I'm trying to do. Now there is one more reason that your saw may try to kick back. And I'm probably missing a few. If your riving knife is not adjusted properly, you may be putting pressure on the blade because the riving knife might be pulling your material to one side or the other. Riving knives have an adjustment and they are intended to run center with the blade. So that is the kerf opening comes to the riving knife, it's squared up and it's nice. You shouldn't feel any resistance when your wood gets to the riving knife right here. There's a little gap right here at the bottom of the blade. You shouldn't feel any resistance when you get there. If you do, your riving knife is out of adjustment. You need to go to your owner's manual and adjust your riving knife. Never operate your saw without this riving knife in place. This is your number one safety feature. If you're using a zero clearance throat plate and you can't get your riving knife in, then you need to put a splitter in your zero clearance throat plate. They're not hard to do. There's tons of videos out there that show you how to do that. I make my zero clearance throat plates because my riving knife raises up and down with my blade and it's attached to the same head that my blade is. So my zero clearance throat plates are designed to have the riving knife in place. Not all saws operate this way and sometimes you will be forced to remove the riving knife to use a zero clearance throat plate whether you've purchased it or made it yourself. So you have to do something to keep the kerf of the board from squeezing back in. Always use your riving knife. All right guys, that's all we got for this time. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of those two videos they are gonna pop up next to me. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.